Welcome back all. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Daz from Moderare Techniques. This week, we're following on a little bit of a theme of using Arduino, JMRI, and using the computer side of things. Now, what I look at doing is showing, stepping you through on the breadboard how to make Dr. Jeff Bunz's DCC interface. I'll go through, step that through a component at a time and how it goes onto the breadboard and then show you two different programs, how we can test a DCC signal. First of all, the, the DCC monitor and the DCC sniffer. Don't forget to subscribe, like, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content. And also a big shout out to my Patreons out there. Every little bit helps, link below. So enough of the waffle, let's get started. MRT Scale Prints, helping you to add realism to your model railway. We are producing craftsman quality prints in various scales, including HO, O and N scales. We are proudly Australian owned and operated. www.modelrailroadtechniques.com So I've had a few people ask me about uh, Dr. Jeff Bunzer's DCC interface. So what I'm going to quickly do, I've got a, a breadboard here. I'll quickly... Um, R&D one up, I'll put one up for you, exactly show you how, how it's done. So I've got all my components across the top here. So the first thing we're going to look at doing is installing the 6N137 opto coupler. So to give you some sort of idea, um, obviously we've got two sides to it. You probably can't see that. If you can, I'll try to zoom in the best I can. But there's a little dot just there. So that denotes pin number one. So we'll just put it on our breadboard. Now obviously we've got a, uh, a channel through the middle here so the bo both these sides are totally in um, isolated from each other because if you have it over here, you'll um, destroy the, the opto coupler. So what we're gonna look at first is doing the pins on this side, which is uh, one, three to four. So we're only gonna use two and three. I'll put the circuit diagram up shortly. So the first thing we need to look at is uh, the resistor number one. So that's the 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 1.3k resistor. So I always like using a multimeter. It tells me what what value is what. So that's our 1.3. So being this is only R and D, I won't cut the leads. So you'll have a few things going left, right, and center. So all right, so pin number two, which is just here, and then we'll bring the DCC from your command station. One side will come in over here, so I'm just giving myself a little bit of room. Yes, I'm just giving myself a little bit of room there. So the next uh, well component we're going to look at doing is capacitor one, which is a 270 pico farad. And these are non-directional, so they don't have a, a plus and minus or cathode anode, so to speak. So it doesn't really matter which way you get them around at this point. So they go between pins two and three. And the next thing we, we will do is diode number one. So that's a, a 1N4148 diode. All right, so the easiest way to denote the the diodes between anode and cathode is we want the cathode on into pin two and then the anode into pin three so the black line for these little guys is cathode anode so we'll just install this little guy here okay which i do we'll go back and we'll test all these shortly so let's let me turn the the diagram around here sorry the the breadboard around okay so now we've got pin five at the bottom here through to eight so five is going to go to ground six is going to go to uh, the arduino so the dcc interrupt pin which is d2 on the nano or digital pin number two on the nano and then we've got to get p 
pin number seven is going to be routed via a, a, a 10k resistor that's going to go to your 5 volt on your, on your Arduino and then pin 8 is also 5 volt so the first resistor we're going to look at putting through is the 10k so that's going between pin 7 and pin 8 so we'll put that nice and close up there like so then we've got a 5k resistor which is the third resistor let me just test that one quickly to make sure we've got the right value yep 5k and that's going to go between pin 6 and 8 so the next thing we're going to look at is the last two Capacitors, so we're going to look at capacitor number two. So it's a a value of 22 microfarads. So that's the, the little black cylindrical one that I'll put in shortly. Now, this version is cathode and nano specific, so we've got to get this around the right way. So just a quick little, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm learning with capacitors as well. This side here with the banding, Is the negative side or the or the uh, cathode so the 22 microfarad is going to go between pin 5 and pin 8 so being this is a polarized capacitor uh, the positive lead is going to go into pin 8 and then the other ones into pin 5 oops Now I'll put a, also a link below, I did in the last video, a link to Dr. Bunza's article on this, why all the components are all used. Obviously in short, we've got DCC coming in between 12 and 16 volts. Arduino only lights 5 volts. The capacitors here are to do with, to level out and take out the noise is my understanding. Uh, within the circuit, so it's a, a lot cleaner signal coming through to the Arduino. So the last capacitor, number three, we're looking at a 0.1 a .1 microfarad. This is non-polarized, so this doesn't matter too much which way this one goes. So in, in effect, it doesn't have a negative and positive. So this is between pin, between pin five and eight as well. So what we've got here is a Arduino Nano with a, the expansion board that's on the underneath here. So the pins we're going to look at doing, and I'll show you how to connect this up very shortly. So the sketch that is loaded up onto this right now is a DCC monitor, and I'll put the link that to that below. So basically what this will do, this will monitor a DCC signal coming in from your command station to the Arduino. So if you get bytes and packets coming through, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave you through that very shortly, um, you know you've got the, the circuit right on, on the breadboard here. So for those of you, this is just a, a simple uh, USB cable that comes in here. At this point in time, this is just supplying the power. So what we're going to look at doing, we're going to be using the 5 volt feed, which is up here, the red cable. Down on the bottom row, we're going to be using the ground cable here. And I spoke briefly before, the Nano uses a, a digital pin number 2 output um, as a what they call a interrupt pin. So what I'll look at doing... So I've set up here, I've got the, so we've got our circuit set up, so I've zoomed out a little bit. So we've got the, the plus and minus buses through here. So we've got, just to let you know, we've got pins 5 and 8 facing the bottom of the screen or facing the, the Arduino here. So this furthest one here, the closest one on this side will be pin number 5. So that's obviously going to be our negative. So we're just going to get a few little jumper cables 
Now just be mindful to, to get this, this step correct because you will, you can damage the, the opto coupler. So then the next one we're going to look at doing is the positive, the 5 volt feed. So it's going to feed 5 volts. So obviously on the other side, pin 8 is going to be our 5 volt feed. So we'll do that now. I ran out of red cables, so I'll use a yellow one. So it's just a matter of putting that in on pin 8. And then the interrupt pin is pin 6. All right, that's not the interrupt pin. So we've got on pin five, we've got the, the, the ground or the negative, and then the interrupt pin on pin six. What I'll do, I'll briefly go through all the, the componentry um, and how it sort of works very, very briefly. We'll go over to the to the DCC monitor and I'll show you what that looks like to know that you're, you've got a, the correct DCC signal coming through. So I'll quickly show you the all the componentry that I've got here. So we'll start over this side. This is the buck converter, which is gonna convert our 12 volts plus DC to our DC plus plus EX command station. So obviously this has got an Arduino Mega on the bottom of it and that only requires nine volts. So I've just got that step down to nine volts. So with that, we've got our DCC signal output to the, so we've got our DCC out of our command station that's going to come into pins two and three on the opto coupler through the componentry then on this side which is pins five through to eight which is this side of the opto coupler we've now got our five volt bus coming in via the arduino into to pin number eight then we've got the green cable here coming out of pin six which is the DCC out or into the interrupt pin into the Arduino. So this is the Arduino Nano that I showed you before. And then we've got our, our ground, which will be going to pin number five. So what we'll quickly do, we'll step over to the monitor and I'll show you how all that works. So currently we've got um, Arduino IDE open. So I'm not just gonna show you how to bring it in, open it up, how to set it all up. There's plenty of good videos out there, how to use it. So this is not so much what this video is about. But this is the, the sketch, and I will link the in the description below where I found it on a GitHub page. So it's a, it's a little bit convoluted getting to it. So it's just easier putting a link up that you can click on and go in and just copy and paste the sketch in. So obviously I've got my Arduino Nano hooked up to my USB COM port number four. So yours might be different depending on your computer. So we're just going to go up to the, the, the top corner here and we're gonna, it'll compile the sketch and then it'll start uploading. So you'll get a sort of a feedback down the bottom here, uploading, you'll see some lights dancing around on the Arduino and then you can see done uploading. So from there, um, it's got a, a part of the sketch that we'll write, we'll do a, a, a print sequence, which is right here. So what that means is you can use the serial monitor. So there's a few different ways to get into the serial monitor. So there's a few different ways you can get to it. Just out of screen here, sorry I can't show you. There's a little like magnifying glass. That's one way of doing it, but we'll just quickly go into tools, serial monitor, and then it brings up the serial monitor. So what that's gonna start doing very shortly, I'll open that right up. It's gonna start going through. So right now, packet, packet counts. We'll stop the auto scroll on that quickly. And let's have a quick look at one of these down the bottom here. So currently the DCC command station is off. So nothing's going through the interface here. So I've got no packets, got no preambles. So I'll go through now. I'll just quickly turn that on. So I've just turned on the DCC EX, sorry, plus plus EX. And now you can see it's totally different. So now we've got 309 packet count we've got a preamble 25 and we got some obviously code uh, binary code that's flicking up there so that we now know that the interface is working correctly and we're getting dcc through into the arduino so let's turn it off again quickly it'll do a few counts and you can see it comes back to 
now the DCC, there's no DCC signal coming through. I'll turn it back on. I'll clear the output so it's just a bit easier to see. And now you can see our decoder or say our interface back on. Now, if I was to start going into and start pushing some functions, whether it's a turnout function or the like, uh, you'll see this, these numbers will start changing. So not really understanding obviously exactly how this all works from a DCC point of view, but it's obviously a very good recce redner just to see whether your DCC signal is coming through. So the, the next part of this video, we're gonna look at a DCC sniffer. So this is, or an analyzer. So this goes in just a, a little bit further into fault finding and the like. I'm still learning what all the code and all that, um, I'm still learning what all the code and all that means, but this is obviously a next, and then you can look at individual items. You can look at individual modules, locomotives come up on the screen just to see what they're doing when you're going through functions or the like. So I'll put a link to this below, but it's off one of Rudy Boa, um, which is a, a European gentleman. And it's his sketch along with Robin McKay. It's a little bit, obviously a little bit older. However, um, it's it's quite a, quite a good sketch and it's got a little bit more versatility in it, built into it since Rudy did his video quite a number of years ago now. So I'll go through the, so this sketch is already loaded up to an Arduino. So I won't actually show that that process again because we did that with a DCC monitor. So we still use the uh, Dr. Bunza's DCC interface with this to bring the DC signal across. So same thing, we need to bring up a, a serial monitor but be mindful that we need to put it, the serial mod on a board rate of 38,400. So we'll go into, bring up the serial monitor again. If it'll let me do it. All right, so got our board rate down the bottom here. So right now it's not doing anything because I don't actually have the DCC on. So we'll just quickly go and turn that on. So now it's obviously, it's gone into idle and it'll just sit there ticking away until we actually put something or put an input into it. So this is where it's a little bit different from the monitor. So the monitor will show that the DCC coming through, but now just, I'll bring this across. Now this is a very, very simple panel that I made up in JMRI with a whole lot of switches. So. These all represent um, DCC decoder addresses of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, through to 11 here. All right, so you look what, what happens. So we're going to go to this first switch here, which is decode, uh, module number 1, decoder number 1. So I'll just turn off that auto scroll for a sec. So we'll see that accessory decoder number one, which is this one here. And it's on module number one and position number one on that module. So the way that DCC convention works up, it's obviously grouped in groups of fours. So if I was to go to, obviously we'll just go through that, obviously then I've turned it that particular one on. So you look what happens if I go to, now it's off. So the same decoder. So if I've then to go to number two, so we're going to address number two, it's one of one, so module number one, position number one on that decoder, and it's currently off. So let me go over to, we'll go over to number four, sorry, number five here, and you look what happens with number five. So we're number five and module number two position number zero and it's obviously we've turned it off so this one little one here this number in between these ones and I was to do that again so this um this little number here is to do with the pulsing uh, which apparently from the solenoid so if you're using solenoid motors point of view that's what they they like to see 
So if I was to go in the very last one, just let me clear that off because obviously we're getting a lot of numbers coming up here. We'll get the very last one. So that's going to be address number 11. Module 3, position number 2. And it's in a state of off. So what we'll quickly do, we will um, go across to the locomotive side of things within what, what we throttle. And I'll show you what the, the lo locomotives uh, or locomotives do. So we're back into the DCC sniffer here. Now, before I showed you accessory decoders, now we're going to look at um, a basic locomotive. So this is the soft controller within Decoder Pro. So I've got a locomotive up here that the track is currently off and you can see the, the sniffer is not doing anything right now. So we'll just go into, being where we've selected this locomotive, you can see that the locomotive information's already started coming up. So we know it stopped. And I've pushed F1, which represents the light function. So they're the functions between F1 and F4. And I know that um, F1 is currently on. And that's what that little, that's what that numeral means. So if I was to go to F2. So I now know, but like F functions 1 and 2 are now, now on. So we'll now switch them off. So the next one should load up saying that there's no functions currently on. So if I now go, let me clear the output. So it's a bit easier to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to go forward. So that's reverse. So we're currently, it's 128 speed steps. We're at speed set number 64 in, in reverse. So we'll go emergency stop. So you can see that has now come up. And what you can also do within this, you can imagine each time you get a locomotive going or selected over here, it'll start scrolling through. And this is only one locomotive, so we can stop the auto scroll, which is, it'll still scroll down, but it won't auto scroll in, into the next page, so to speak. So the new part of this program that Rudy has looked at doing is, if you can sort of see over here on the right, there's also some keyboard commands here. So you can play around with the, the, the refresh time. So I think this is currently the refresh time of 16. So that's, um, sorry, refresh time of five seconds. And then a packet buffer size of 16. So you can play around with those. But what is also good with this, he's also put in show accessory packets toggle. And so you can do on and off. So if I was to go up here and put in L and then send, you can now see that the locomotive items are not uh, currently there. So if I was to go L again and then send, you can see the locomotive has now come back. So we'll just get rid of the locomotive again there in a sec. So just to compare that with, now just up here in the, obviously this is Dakota Pro, so it's a bit different. So you can actually have a little turnout um, turnout screen so i'll put in turnout number one which is effectively address number one as we we spoke about before i can go right up to 11. we can go throw closed so on and off so i think that's a, a quite a neat little uh, little feature uh the dcc sniffer it just gives you a little bit more information about where information is coming from um, as I said, I'm just learning it myself. So this code on the end here, the binary code, I'll have to look into what learn exactly what that's all about. But quite an exciting little piece of kit. So with those two sketches uploaded onto two different Arduinos, one being the monitor, which is sort of just a almost like an on and off to see whether your DCC is coming through and your interface is working. And also then into which looks into a, a lot more information. So I think uh, moving forward, I'll put these into a nice little box and I'll be able to put some, clip them onto uh, the track or the, the track bus and then bring it up on Arduino IDE through the through serial monitor. So that's uh, the end of this video. Uh, so obviously we've stepped through using or how to build 
the Dr. Bunzer's DCC interface on the breadboard. Didn't want to bore you with how I would solder it together. Um, all I did was I you can actually get R&D circuit boards that are structured exactly the same as a breadboard. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, if I find one, I will link below. Also, we look, we step through two different modes on an Arduino or two different sketches. One being the DCC monitor, which helps us to see whether the DCC signal is coming either on or off effectively. And also then the DCC sniffer or analyzer, which actually breaks down each individual item like a locomotive a stationary decoder that is using the, the DCC bus. So I hope you liked the, the video. So there's gonna be more coming probably around the, the Arduino stuff because I'm really enjoying it getting into that. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon, like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.